Hey now, everyone. Welcome back to Brand New Take Game Podcast. Excited to get this show out and excited that I had the guys from Trophy Line Tree Saddles with me today. And uh, I'm actually here in Florida on vacation this week with my wife and son, but excited that we got this show out. So thanks to Sean, Evan, and Nick for joining me today. And if you know anything about saddle hunting, you know Trophy Line is one of the names that you have heard about, and Trophy Line continues to basically raise the bar, come out with new products that just you know blow away some of the competitors in the market space, if you ask me. So a uh, brand new platform called the Wingman, a brand brand new high-end fanny pack uh, called the Plateau, a new rope system that is lighter and stronger and actually smaller. So, I mean, just so many new and great innovative products coming out from Trophy Line. Super excited that you guys get all that info today in this podcast. And also, this show was brought to you by the guys at HuntStand. As always, you know, if you had not had the chance yet, make sure to check out HuntStand. But you can save 20% right now and join in to win a complete hunting system from NUMA if you register and take advantage of that 20% discount through HuntStand. So make sure you all check that out. Enjoy the show. It's a great one. And as always, deer season never ends. We'll see you guys again next week. All right, guys. Welcome back to Brand New Take Aim Podcast. And excited to be back and get a new show out. Excited to talk with Sean Ferguson and crew from Trophy Line Saddle. So what's uh, what's happening, Sean? And we also have Evan and Nick on the phone with us. So uh, how are you guys doing today? Good, Brandon. Thanks, man. It's, uh, It's good to be back been a while yeah. that's right man it's been a minute and uh totally excited to <laughs> have you back and talk about some new products uh, i feel like uh we just kind of said this but i feel like we just did you know a podcast together but in reality it was a freaking year ago and since then you know trophy lines just kind of exploded with you know a bunch bunch of new and great products that uh we didn't get to talk about so I'm excited to be back with you and kind of, you know, explore some of these new products and see what uh, it can do for us and our mobile setups. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, well, the, the last time we talked, we had um, we just we only had the two saddles, the Ambush Light and the Ambush Pro. Now I think back to it, and we were just launching the Mission. I think we were just launching the Mission platform, or right on the heels of it launching. Yep. And you look, you look. You look now. You know we we have uh, we have a couple saddles. We have a couple platforms. We got a couple sticks. We got packs and bags, and it's it's been a it's been a crazy year. It's uh you know um, uh, growth wise and and not slowing down. So it's been fun. Like you said, it's been a blur. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, actually, I think if I remember right, Sean, like it was maybe two to three weeks later the mission platform came out it was like right after we did the podcast so uh it's crazy yeah, to see yeah. all the yeah. stuff that's yeah. come since <laughs> absolutely it's uh it's good it's good it's uh because this this category is just continue to grow you know it, i think a lot of people um were thinking it would be a fad and uh you know, I think it was, especially the crew on our team here, I, we, we knew it wasn't. I think as, as more people actually get a chance to, whether put their butt in a saddle and climb on a platform, whether it's at one of our shows or presentation, you know, you always see those, uh, new people for the first time that kept saying no, that the light bulb goes off and they realize how comfortable it is. And so it's, that's just kind of, it's, it's a big groundswell happening you know and and continuing to grow so it's exciting it's exciting time yeah for sure and you know probably nick and evan can speak to this too but it seems like overall you know uh trophy line and just the the saddle community i mean it seems like i don't remember a time in the industry last i mean maybe it's been 10 years or so maybe since the beginning of the cell cam but i haven't seen like a group of users meaning us hunters getting into the mobile setups like basically as enthusiastic as they are and you guys correct me if I'm wrong but it seems to be like people are just very very passionate about it and just uh really very into passionate. it right <laughs> yeah it's it's like a gold rush yeah. of ideas and um and passion for this this way of hunting right now um yeah I'm loving it uh I and it's people getting really innovative um 
and it's just really nice to see just the excitement for changing up mobile hunting right now. Yep, I agree. You know, what? one thing I think, guys, I want to touch on real quick is just us as bow hunters uh, and deer hunters in general, we we love to, you know, pick our gear. It's very custom, and I think the saddle thing just represents that part of that community about being a little bit gear ahead of shin. And these guys, like, I've I've been at some of the shows and heard guys talk. Everybody has their own niche, and, like, I do this and I do that. I yeah. think it's just one of the reasons why saddle hunting is so popular. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's so so customizable, right? You know, there's a lot of great product on the market, not just from us, but a, a lot of companies now, and especially on the saddle side, more saddles than than anything else. So, you know, that that's what's great about it. You know, there's there's a, there's a lot of options for people to choose from, and then you know you can you get a saddle from this guy and a platform from this guy and a set of sticks from this guy. Great, you know, that's what works for you, and that's the way you like it more power to you you know that that's what's great about it and there there are there are options out there now too you know kind of going back to that passion side of it you know you're discussing i mean that's how that's how nick ended up uh, while here at trophy line you know i actually met him um uh, right before we launched at the full draw film festival and uh, he just actually recognized my hat and we started talking from there and end up becoming ambassador for us at the beginning and the more I talked to him, you know, he actually lives here in Pittsburgh, um, not too far from us and and uh listened to his background. He's an engineer and I was like, You gotta come over here <laughs> you know. Right. I, I could I could use this. So, <laughs> yep. You know, and so that it built from that passion, you know, and you that's 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 what's great about it, is everybody that's on the team is they they live and breathe this stuff. You know, everybody might do it a little different, but we're all outdoorsmen and, you know, if we're, you know, not cranking away at our job behind a computer, guess where we're at. And even then with what the business we're in, we get to, we get to play and, and do that uh, on a regular basis anyway, mm-hmm. trying out new product and photo shoots and you name it. So, and then, and in Custer and our team, he's been he's been filming for the outdoor industries for a number of years now for some major networks, and uh, uh, like I said earlier, bringing him on board has just changed the game for us. He he makes us look good, you know. He's uh, and we're just scratching the surface, so I'm excited for the future. Well, let's get into a little bit here about uh, you know some of the new stuff Trophy Line has, but uh, you know Nick, maybe you want to start with uh, you know obviously the big thing that uh, seems to be just talked about and, and shared everywhere on social media is that wingman platform. So let's get into that a little bit about the concept design and, and how guys really should use it. Yeah. So when Sean and I first started talking about doing a smaller platform, uh, we actually jumped, we, you know, we had come out with a mission and right after we completed the mission design, we hopped into the EDP. Right after we completed that design, we're like, okay, what's next? What could we do that is not only more mobile, but faster? So we decided, let's do a stick top platform. But we didn't want to just do a stick top platform that had an angle or a flat. We wanted to make it so that you can still stand up on it and you have that comfort angle. And it really just felt a little more stable. And we wanted that, that casting rigidity, right? Okay. So we just got to, to work and really what we wanted to do is, is to figure out a design that wasn't super minimalistic, but was small enough that you could just grab it and go, you know, right after work, you got two hours left of sunlight, grab it, toss in the back of the truck, get to the woods, get set up quickly and you're hunting. Um, and it just took off from there. You know, we just started with a basic angle design and then just started adding in our, our, you know, TL features, you know, with some of the, the bumps and shapes on it that, that make it look like one of our products and give it the feel that it needs to have in the tree. And that, then the add to that was, you know, we ha- we set up really high bar with the mission and how stable it is right on the tree and uh, no matter what angle. So, you know, when we did that, you know, that, you know, that's where the standard is now. So going forward, so whether it's EDP or the wingman, it had to rise to that 
if not be better, you know, and stronger. And, uh, and both of those did ironically, you know, with, um, um, when you get, when we get through all the third party testing, you know, and, and you, you, you do all the static texts and things like that. And, and then you, you load it to failure, you know, they, uh, they have both actually, uh, helped on the mission side of it from, from a strength standpoint. Wow. So, yeah. That's impressive. I, I will really say like, and you guys probably agree, like there's so, so many things and, 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 cool products that come out but occasionally you see something there like whoa that's really cool and that's what i thought sean exactly when i saw the wingman i was like man it, like what a cool concept and design and to put it on a stick and uh, i mean the whole nine yards i just thought was brilliant like and, and such a advantage to somebody wanting to be you know starting out as a saddle hunter or somebody advanced is just an extra tool and i just thought it was such a great you know great job by you guys i thought it was such cool cool idea and like i said when i saw it i was like literally that's one of those products i was like wow like that that's so sweet so uh i think you guys it was, uh, it was with fun- that. It, yeah it was it was funny when we um what when we were building it you know, we it, we're notorious just to kind of hold everything tight until we're absolutely 100 percent we're launching and this is the time it's launching and it's in our warehouse yeah yeah you know um our good friend matt Garris over at uh, Out on Limb. He uh, he posted a picture at a show with a product that was very very similar, and um, I actually sent him a snapshot and I sent him a picture of ours, what we had, what we've been working on behind the scenes, and uh, I said I, I said I think you've been hiding in some of our our, our meetings, and uh, we had a good laugh about it because we literally, you know, very similar items at the same time to, for a product that never been out in the market before. So it was, it was, it was cool to see, you know, and we did like, like Nick said too, is pure portability kind of the match up with our sticks. We were, we've been designing this and thinking of this way before one sticking has become popular, you know? So a lot of guys are talking about utilizing ours for one sticking, but never had any intentions of that. It was always to be utilized with our sticks. But again, everybody's different. That's why they want to use it you know, more power to him. That's great. You know, so it has uh, the en- endless options with, uh, with the wingman. Yeah. There's a lot of features. Everybody. you can do. And speaking of which Nick can let, give us a little bit of the insides of like, you know, what's away and, and actually, you know, functionality of it and how we should use it. Yeah. So it weighs about 3.5 pounds. Um, and you could use it, the way we're going to sell it is by itself or with a four pack of our sticks. So it could be as your fifth stick, but as Sean said, it, your system doesn't need to be that way. Me personally, I'll probably have it be my fourth stick and potentially have some eighters, but there are other guys who may want to keep it as that fifth stick or just do three. It's really just all about what you want personally. But the, the nice thing is you don't have to carry a standalone platform. You climb the tree, you set the stick just like you would for any normal climbing stick, but you just climb the top and you're done. Um, so it really just gives you more, you know, more ability to just change up your system on the fly versus kind of having to dial it in and use that same thing for a while until you see if you actually like it, you know. Um, and for me, it was more about the speed you can get up so, set up so much faster. Like I said, once you set your final stick, which now is your platform, you're done. There's no time setting up, camming down, leveling out any other platform. You set it, forget it, get up in the tree and you're hunting. Yeah, that's a huge advantage right there. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And, uh, I assume... I mean, as far as space on it, you know, um, it's about 12 by 8, you know, uh, 12 inches wide, 8 inches from the tree but it still has a nice top surface. That top surface is about five inches off of the tree. So you can still stand up and I have a size 12 boot and I can still stand up straight on that flat portion, do any adjusting of my you know, gear strap, bow hanger, or uh, mess around in my pack, what have you. And then I can lean back on that angle. You know, that's about 25 degrees. We, we actually took a long time to decide on that angle, trying to make sure uh, it gave the right amount of comfort and feel as you're leaning 
but was not too drastic. So it didn't start to, you know, make the, the middle of your foot just uncomfortable throughout the day. So it right. took us, I think the longest thing for us was deci- deciding what that angle should be. But I feel like we hit the nail on the head for it. Now that angle, Nick, is that just based off of like you guys doing some designs and then field testing? Yeah, really. It was, it was more about um, just stealing it out. Yeah, you know, uh, I actually would go out and I'd uh, adjust some pieces of angle iron that I had rigged up and just see what felt comfortable for me and bring that to the table when we came up with the discussion. So, and it turned out well. Yeah, you feel like in the back, you know, you feel almost like the um, arch of your foot, right? Even a yep. set of boots. Because if you make it too much, then you know, you're, you feel like your toes are off, you know, off the back of the, and, and if it's not enough, you know, it's, you know, why not just make it flat? So it felt like that 25 degrees, it was like, so it's just a perfect amount, you know, where you still have the angle to lean back and, and, um, uh, have the ability to move around the platform's edge, and then, um, and then also they'll have the ability to stand up on the flat part if you had to. Yeah. yeah, and the thing for me for keeping it not as steep is, you know, if you had it a steeper angle, it, it wants to keep you pitched away from the tree, right? Right. So, okay, it, you feel, you still have the comfort of that angle back, but you can still have more body control getting back up to standing straight or moving around the tree without being pitched away farther than you might want to be. So it gives you a little bit more body control, I felt like, having that angle. Yeah, I gotcha. I like that idea, you know, like you, you were saying, Nick, that, uh, you know, you wear a size 12 boot or whatever, and you can still probably grab that angle and ball up on the ball of your toes almost and and feel comfortable. And that that's really important if, if, if and when the situation occurs that, you know, you have to move a little bit upright and it, it doesn't – make you slide back down or anything like that. So I'm glad to see the platform is up top as big as it is to give you that flexibility. Definitely. Yeah. You guys there? Did I lose you for a second? Yep. Oh, no. No. No, we're good. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Right. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, one thing I want to talk about too, Nick, is it's basically just a one strap and pull so like you're saying about being quick and mobile, like, I mean, you literally loop it around, you pull it, cinch it tight, and you're good to go. That's correct. Yeah, it, it cinches just like any of our climbing sticks. So all of us by now should be comfortable with a, a cam buckle strap. Throw it around the Versa button, crank it tight, pull down, and you're set. And the nice thing is that, you know, this does come standard with the double steps too. So it's really easy to set this incredibly solid so once you get that bottom set you know by pushing down on it physically you get that you step on the bottom of both double steps and it seats perfect before you can step up on the platform gotcha. but uh yeah and like and like sean had said you know we wanted to make sure that this was as rigid as a stick top platform could be because we had such a high benchmark to to meet with the mission and the edp and i think we did a really good job yeah it looks like amazing platform and uh I just think that's such a, again, going back to the concept and idea of it, man, it's just so sweet being able to grab a stick, which is your platform, and boom, you know, you you put it up and you're done. So, and like you said, just being, you know, what it's all about is being versatile, and, and you, Sean, like you said, are perfect, you know, you use what you want, but if you want to use it on your third step, fourth step, fifth step, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just do what you can right. to be perfectly set in that tree the right way. Yep. Exactly. So I know, uh, Sean, you had some other products I definitely want to hit on, you know, but uh, you want to go through the, I know you have a new deluxe fanny pack out. You want to hit on that? Yeah, we got, we're, talk- yeah, we're actually just, yeah, let's talk, yeah, let's talk about that because that's kind of really good evolution here. Um, you know, we, um, it, again, talking about mobility, right, just being totally mobile. And, uh, you know, last year we launched the, the case pack, um, you know, full backpack, 20 pockets, 1,950 inches. You got a pocket for your platform and can strap your sticks to the side and, and, and plenty of room for everything else. Um, and it's very successful. You know, it's been doing really well for us. Um, you know, but like myself, I, 
like I love backpacks. I'm always a, I've been designing backpacks for a long time now, and uh, but personally, I prefer more of a um, like a deluxe fanny pack with shoulder pads, you know, shoulder harness and things like that. So kind of leaving your back exposed, so it's not so hot, right? And um, so right after we launched Cage, we actually started getting to work on on this deluxe fanny pack, which is uh, known as the uh, plateau pack, um, basically a, a platform tower uh, that came up with that. Coming up with names is always fun. But, uh, um, you know, the, uh, and the whole design behind that was, again, being mobile, a way to <clears throat> strap your sticks to it, um, strap the extra set of, uh, you know, a, a jacket to to it, um, and then also has the ability to carry a uh, anybody's platform from the tops of your shoulders. Um, and again, everything's silent buckles. We actually have, we use neoprene sleeves. Those are very anal about noise and things hitting each other. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it has plenty of pockets. Um, we're actually uh, just you know, just getting ready to launch it on our website, uh, all the specs. But it, po- it looks looks to be somewhere right around 850 inches, which is actually pretty decent size for a uh, deluxe fanny pack. Um, and then it has full capabilities of Molly accessories on the outside, uh, the, the, the waist um, strap. Keep it quiet as well um, with the Molly system. Yeah, yeah, um, and again, kind of fully customizable, right? Anybody can build their, their you know, the whatever the way they want. You can add multiple pouches to it, and or a holster. Some guys may carry, and uh, um, also is uh, fully adjustable for basically any sternum size length. Cause, so you got multiple straps up and down, so so it hits your right right where you want it on your hips. Some guys like a little bit higher, some guys like a little bit lower. So you have full adjustability up and down to make sure your your shoulder harnesses hit you in the perfect place. And um, that's launching, we'll actually have it up on the site here in the next day or two and launching um, uh, sometime next week. So we're really excited about that. We've been showing it off at some of the shows that we've been doing. Um, and some, and some pictures floating around. Me personally, it's one of my favorite new items that we come out with this year. So we're uh, we're looking forward to that one. And Sean, that will be available when? Uh, right around the first week of August. Perfect. Um, we're yeah, we were hoping the um, oh, excuse me, first week of uh, so September. You mean? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were shooting for some time in August, but like. Everybody else is dealing with delays on everything from fabric delays to freight delays, to you name it. So it's been uh, we're launching it a little later than uh, fully planned to. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, I like what you said, you know, just to recap a couple items, you know, about it being uh, totally silent. The neoprene, like you said, you know, that just dampens so much sound. And even what you said about just the way, you know, your shoulders and everybody knows where, you know, you have a pack on, that's where you build heat, and we ultimately end up sweating. So I'm glad you touched on that, just about, you know, relieving some of that temperature off your back, especially when you're carrying something. And, uh, you know, the Molly system as well, being able to just customize and keep it quiet and, and just functionalities of, of stuff where you want it. As, as we all know, that's what's so important about packs and gear like that. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, uh, Nick and Evan just got done filming a, a video, and and he sent me some pictures, and he he packed his out totally different than how I packed mine out, you know. So, which was cool to see, because again, it's it is uh, it has so many different purposes or uh, options to it that uh, uh, it's really endless on on how you uh, how you. Um, um, how you strap everything it. down. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, yep. So, <clears throat> yeah, and we so we're, we're excited. About that we, one. yeah, that was our goal in design is we wanted to make it so that obviously it was a well-made pack, um, had a decent amount of storage space internally, but we wanted to provide enough straps so that any user could cinch down whatever they wanted wherever they wanted. Um, you know, Sean was carrying his sticks on the top of the fanny. I had my sticks on the bottom of the fanny. Uh, it just depends on 
however you want to do it. Some people might actually strap them to the platform that is attached to the back of your, our shoulder straps. That works too. It just all depends on what each user wants to do. Um, and the main thing for us when we got into designing the Deluxe Fanny is, you know, I always saw that as the shoulder straps being a lot of wasted space. So that was really important for us to make sure we had the capability of strapping our platform in that wasted space. So you still have the ventilation, but you're not losing anything. You're getting all the portability of your system still within this pack. And, you know, this isn't just for saddle hunters. Those straps, you can carry a tree stand on this flat, this uh, this backpack. It's great. So wow, that's nice. It can be used for a lot more than just the saddle hunting industry, and that was our goal, too. You know, we wanted to make it so that anybody who wants to have a well-made deluxe fanny for mobile hunting can use it. Absolutely. Oh, that that does sound really nice, and I mean, that, that again, just going back to what I know about Trophy Line and Sean and, and what you guys are all about, it, it just, having that extra versatility in a product, like being able to throw a tree stand on it, I mean, that's what you guys are all about, so that's that's a super cool feature. Yep. So I know we have touched on the Covert Pro Saddle, and I want to talk about the new Tech Core Ropes. And then, uh, you know, Evan, if you could fill us in on what we got going on YouTube, because I like like what you guys just said, Nick and Sean. Sometimes we need to see those packs, and we need to see those gears, how guys are using those gears before we can customize it ourselves, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. and that's... Um, kind of what we did with our, our tech tip series is to just kind of give insight into, you know, what, what we do with it, how we use it, um, let people see the versatility and usability of the product, um, you know, before they buy it. It's a good way to show it off and also uh, people who do get the product, you know, give them um, the resource to know how to use it properly. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing with our tech tip series. Is just continuous, continuing to show product specific things as well as you know, general tips uh, and things like that to uh, essentially continue to grow the saddle industry as a whole and get uh, more people saddle hunting and learning more about it. Because you know, that's where it's you know, take, not that it's taking a long time to get to grow, but a lot of people don't know about it, uh, but, and there just aren't resources for it yet. Really, uh, and that's kind of our main goal is just um, show it off more. Uh, and, and be that resource for people to to learn more about it. Exactly. Yeah, yep, I can agree Brandon, more. If you look like you could, yeah, I was going to say, Brandon, if you look, at, you know, anybody can just kind of Google search something and you're going to find it. But we wanted to make sure, we wanted to have a home for all these tech tips, right? We wanted to, right. we wanted to kind of make it uniform, and and a lot of things that we went through, and and and, and really a lot of what our customers um, ask us all the time. So we just kind of started making a checklist, and anything from you know basics of saddle hunting to you know how to tie a certain knot, you know, and um, so the, the videos could or any you know pretty quick to from 30 seconds to you know four or five minutes and kind of everything in between so with that that's been going well for us you know and, and i think helping a lot of people um and because i think sometimes all of a sudden they find trophy line as a whole just when they're doing their search on saddle hunting and uh, we got lots of phone calls and dms and text messages with that question we just sent them a link to you know, our tech tips and, and answers a lot of questions and, and probably answers a lot more that they had. So right. it's been, been a great help. Yeah. No, I, I love that, and I love that idea. And like I said, it's so nice. I, I'm one of those guys that I, I love to see something visually. It, it, I don't mm – -hmm. you know what I mean? I can't just read and be like, oh, yep, yeah, that's how I'm going to change my gear. And uh, I if I see it, I can then just – it just process that and go like, oh, that this is something I could really use. So, yeah, I, you know, I love that. And there's so much stuff like, you know, we're like what we're talking about in this podcast. There's so much stuff you guys just really needed a spot to do that. So I think that's a great idea. Yep. Yeah. And then that's, that, you know, that was, you know, big point of bringing um, uh, Evan on, on top of, 
you know, just shooting better content, you know, consistently. And uh, so he just he kind of took a bull by the horns and has run has started running with it. So it's been it's been great to see. Exactly. So, so Evan, give everybody a little bit of like rundown. Like I, I know it's YouTube, but YouTube, what's the channel they want to subscribe to? And, and do you have a set schedule, or are you just kind of uploading as as you go, so to speak? Um, so it's just the it's just Trophy Line on YouTube. Um, and then the series that we were talking about is the Trophy Line Tech Tips series. Um, we try to do weekly or biweekly posts on that. We don't have a set schedule by any means, but kind of as we as we find fit. And uh, you know, with the season quickly approaching us and in season in a lot of places now, uh, you know, just trying to do more season seasonally relevant things um, and get people ready uh, for the season. Exactly. So. Is Sean, give me a little bit of info on the new, the new rope system and, and how you want to use it and, and what's different from the previous. Yeah, so we, um, you know, so our our existing ropes that come with our kits are uh, eleven millimeter. Um, we, uh, you know, just like everybody, they want to get everybody wants to get lighter, you know, um, lighter, quicker. Um, more packability, you know, the, those types of things. So, um, working with our, our, our rope guy, um, he, uh, probably maybe a year and a half ago, we, uh, we started challenging him kind of, how do we get, how do we make it lighter? You know, how do we bring a, a, a more deluxe version of what we have currently and, uh, make it lighter, make it stronger, things like that. And um, what come out of that was, well, lots of testing. And uh, we've actually gotten a couple of videos on our rope test, how we do it. So it's pretty cool uh, machinery um, over in Ohio. Um, but we end up coming out of there what we call uh, tech core. So it's 8 millimeter rope, um, uh, well over 8,600 pound brake strength. Um, we do we do put a, a sewn eye on there, so we put a five inch sewn eye um, on of it, but it's super pliable. So where you can utilize this as a tree tether, um, um, or you can also use it as a lineman's rope. Um, you girth hitch it on your lineman loop. Um, that's actually how uh, myself and Nick are utilizing it. Um, so again, it ma- it takes your uh, where your 11 millimeter ropes, you probably you have you know your lineman rope in one one pouch and your tree tether in another pouch. Um, with tech core, you can actually take both ropes and put it in one small stuff pouch. Okay, that's and, nice. Um, so so yeah, so it's a, it's a lot lighter. It's actually stronger than our, our 11 mil. Um, and so it just it frees everything up, um, and uh, it's just a little more convenient. So, it, and when you buy that, it comes with a Prusik and and uh, a black diamond carabiner, uh, an oval carabiner. But um, and there's some ascenders that work that work great on there, um, including the Kong. We'll get down to eight, uh, eight millimeter uh, ropes and the Kong, the Kong duck. Um, so, been working great for us. We've been we've been utilizing it for uh, a few months now. Um, and so looking forward to u- u- using using it this hunting season coming up. Yeah, that sounds nice. And I'm sure you probably, Sean, hear that whisper all the time about, and it probably makes you chuckle at some point because you're like, it has to end somewhere. But how <laughs> how do you keep answering guys that say I want to get wider and quieter? <laughs> yeah, it's a fine line, right? <laughs> right. Because you know, it's you know because you know our biggest thing is all about safety. I mean that's. We, we start there and you know it's, it's one thing to get lighter but if you start to jeopardize the safety on it it's not worth it you know so um, you know the road's a good example because we the, you, know, you see all kinds of things on social media and what some people are using um, where you know our our 8 millimeter gets lighter and smaller, but it actually has a higher brake strength than our, right. our 11 millimeter, you know, and that's the thing, you know, the, the more, um, we spend time with our rope guy and understanding that there's, you know, you can, you just got to be careful on what you're purchasing and, uh, from where and understand what you're buying. Cause you know, a, uh, uh, 
you know, an 8,600 pound brake strength rope, you look at it as, you know, 860 pound workable load. So it's at 10%. So if something might sound like a high brake strength, but you use that 10% number to really go, okay, this is really what you should be hanging from, you know, from a weight okay. perspective or nothing over that. And, um, so I, I'm not sure uh, a lot of people know that or understand that. So, so, the, so that just kind of goes into everything that we do, not just our rope, but also our platforms and saddles. Um, right. You know, when we're, we're actually, uh, Nick and I are part of a, um, a saddle committee, uh, that's part of, um, uh, TMA, True Sands Manufacturer Association, that we've been a part of for a couple of years now, and we meet once a month. Um, and there's standards getting built for testing saddles um, on a universal basis. Um, in fact, we, we, had a, we had a big meeting yesterday, so there there'll become some type of standard that comes out you know, sometime down in the near future, very similar to what safety harnesses and tree stands go through um, right now. So yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's good. It's good for the entire industry. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm glad you brought that up, Sean, and uh, I'm glad that you you have continued with that because I know last time we spoke that, uh, you know, you had been part of that committee. And, uh, you know, yep. it's good to talk about this stuff because it, it, it gives somebody that maybe is on the fence about trying – saddle hunting that leverage to go you know what i'm ready to do it because there's there's not a lot of talk about safety and and not that there isn't but i think a lot of people just question that and how safe it is and i know you, you know you have just upteen amounts of customers that don't have issues but i'm glad to hear you speak about like well 8600 pounds it really means 10 percent of that but those are things that give people comfort to want to try and do the system yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's from the, the 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 safety committee side. You know, it's not just Sean and Nick. You know, on this. You know, it's it's made up of right um, all our, all of our competitors. Yeah, there. You know, the guys from Tether on there and Latitude, and Heath from H2, and and, and a number of others. And it's nice because you know, we'll, you know, we'll we're talking through these things because you know, at the end of the day, it's going to make us all better and everything all safer. Right, as, right, and uh, and anybody launching something in the future will have to abide by, you know, the, the safety standards in it, and which is which has been overdue, you know. It's just a long it's a long process, you know. Sure. The, the yeah. something you go through ASTM and um, uh, the governing body. It's just it, again, it's just a long process, and and but it's good. We have an open dialogue, and and um, you know, and then we we settle on, you know, yeah, we all agree on this and we move on to the next thing and, and, and keep going. And, um, but we, we meet once a month and, uh, and probably as we get closer to ATA show, we might probably be meeting a little bit more and then we'll actually meet at ATA also. So and just keep going from there until it's complete. So it's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. And, and I'm sure there's things, Sean, that, you know, you have learned or talked about in those meetings that have been just a standard for you guys that, you know, you guys have wanted to share with the industry to, to make it safer. And I think that just gives, like I said, everybody a, a level a, a level of comfort that, uh, you know, otherwise we wouldn't have, which, you know, kudos to you guys for doing that and be a part of that committee. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I know we have maybe one more thing I wanted to touch on, Sean, and that was the Covert yeah. Pro Saddle. Uh, I think it's, you know, pretty awesome looking in the new Mossy Oak Bottom Land. So give me a little bit rundown on that. Any new features on that we need to know about and how we should use it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, uh, in the past, we had, uh, we had launched with the Ambush Lite and the Ambush Pro. So we gave people a couple of different options from the mesh version and the camo version. And, uh, you know, uh, we then, um, had launched the covert like that, which had been you know, very successful for for us, and uh, we just you know, we got a number of requests, DMs, you know, phone calls, you, know, you name it, asking if we were going to come out with a uh, a camo version of that, and um, you know, it was always kind of sitting there, 
you know, uh, for the option, but we figured if enough people asked for it, we would, we would come out with it. And, um, and so we decided to, so we kind of got to work and, and so same structure, same build as, uh, the covert light. Um, now it's just, it's, it's in bottom land. So it has a brush tree coat. It's actually a, a, a windproof fabric. So it's, you know, especially Northeast, um, up Michigan area, you know, where you get some really cold winters, um, wind blowing, going hunting season. This, this makes it nice, you know, cause it blocks that wind. Right. Um, it's super soft and super quiet. So we're actually getting ready to launch this in uh, the next day or so. Um, put some we put some uh, teaser pics out on social media yesterday, and some uh, more info going up on our website in the next day or two. Um, so we're ex- excited for that. You know, we we had really good success when we had the Ambush Pro. Um, you know, a lot of people love the bottom land pattern, including myself. It's my favorite. Um, so we're uh, we're looking forward to. To launching that here shortly and um and no no additional features you know the covert light works so well for us you know and and for the price point it's at you right. know that, that we, we're and again we're very conscious when when we launch a product um like the covert light or the pro or any of our platforms we're just very pr- conscious with the price points where they're at and making sure that you know that uh, they're affordable to, to people and um, and you get a lot of features for your dollar. Um, so we start going down the list of you know the multiple rows of Molly. We give you two extra pouches compared to uh, a lot of people. Um, the adjustability to it, you know, it, again, there's a lot of value for your dollar and in, uh, in the pro, it's just like the the light. So so we're looking forward to launching that here in the next day or so. Well, that would be nice. By the time this podcast is out, that will be out, you know, about the same time. So yep. it would be cool that everybody can check that out. And, uh, you know, uh, what a little change from, you know, talking products, but uh, any of the uh, upcoming seasons are you guys excited about? Do you guys have any hunts planned, Did you, you know, early season uh, velvet whitetail or anything like that? What are you guys excited for coming up for hunting season? Yeah, I think we're all itching to go shoot something. Yep. You know, it's and nice. uh, it's, 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 it's we got about, about that time. three weeks here still in PA before the season kicks off. Uh, kind of an early start in the area that Sean and I hunt. Um, so I, I'm itching pretty bad. I'm out there shooting the bow and, and, and getting ready. And never too excited in early season to sit out in the heat, but I'm always excited to be out there. So, um, no, I'm, I'm ready. Um, we got, I myself have a hunt in Kentucky, uh, late November. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, that'll be my first time down there hunting in Kentucky. So I'm really excited to see what that has to hold for me. Um, but, but in general, I, I always just can't wait for this time of year, man. I live for it. Yeah. So when does, uh, PA start? So sometime like the last week in September then? So in, what's called a special regulations area. So in the, the greater Pittsburgh area, oh. uh, it's the 18th of September. Oh, and nice. the rest of the state starts two weeks after that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Where are you going to be in yes, Kentucky? Yeah. What part of the state? Uh, Eastern part of the state. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Well, that should be fun too. If you've never been to Kentucky. So they, I know they have a healthy deer herd. So, I mean, you, sh- you should be in, into some deer, which will be nice. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for it. Yeah, absolutely. Sean, what do you got planned? Um, a little bit of the same. You got uh, um, over over here in PA. You got uh, a couple spots in Ohio. We'll be bopping over to Kentucky. We picked up a lease in Kentucky, so we're uh, we'll be heading over there. And then um, um, I'm headed down to uh, Tennessee with uh, Unguided Outdoor Guys. Um, in October, also, so I'm super excited to to do that with those guys. And um, and I've never never hunted in Tennessee. I've visited there before, but never hunted. So I'm looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, me neither. Different. Yeah. So and uh, and you know th- this will be the first year too with uh, well, before we've all kind of self filmed, but we'll um, 
Evan will be hanging with us and uh, filming. So we're well, looking forward nice. to that. And yeah. 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 So uh, hopefully he makes us look good and hopefully the, the deer will read the script. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I'll be honest with you, I'm just excited to get back out. You know, it's uh, we've all been shooting our bows and um, – we partnered up with uh, with PSE, so everybody's shooting PSE, and I got a new stick bow and playing around with. So Very it's nice. uh, it's gonna be ex- it's gonna be exciting season. So looking uh, looking forward to it. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited for the new products to come out, and uh, you know, thank you guys for being on today and kind of explaining some of the new gear. And uh, you know, I just think it. Uh, the past year I've gotten so into the saddle hunting and, and the mobility of it and being able to get up and move and, and change spots and just, you know, everything that, why everybody talks about it and why they like it. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough about, uh, you know, the experience I've had so far with my trophy line products and, uh, you know, Sean, just appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I wish you guys the best of luck this coming season. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I appreciate it. Good luck to you too. Absolutely. will be here before yeah. you know it. Yeah, it will be. And, uh, you know, boys and girls, as you know, you know, Sean just said a bunch of these products will be out here in the next week or two or next month. So uh, make sure to get back with Trophy Line, check those out. And uh, Nick, Evan, Sean, thank you guys. We'll, we'll do this again real soon. <laughs>